Hi everyone, my name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I always appreciate the support of you guys. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for subscribing, of course. And the comments are, I always say it, therapeutic, absolutely therapeutic. You guys are really great people, supportive people. This is really what's maintaining the channel, or you guys. Structures, and that's what we're looking at. Oh, you can be sure we're looking at under Dan was so crater. Ah, third day, Dan was so crater. So this is a definite structure. These are definite structures. And each of them have light sources on top of them. And when you look at them, I mean, what do you guys think they are? The, th the objects that I just circled. Do you think in any way that these objects could be natural? I think not. Well, not for me anyways. We each have our own opinions on everything and that's okay. That's just okay. But these are little things that I'm always mentioning during my research. In reality, we know there are UFOs up there. So there has to be someone on the moon. And that is a very scary thought, seeing that we were told there was no one up there. Just my opinion. Down was old crater. I'm keeping the intensity of the exposure down. It, you know, there's no color. Well, here, of course not. It's x-ray. But you'll see later on in this video, there is a lot of close-ups and color. And that's what we're going to look at. And I'm getting another one up right away. As soon as this one, while this one is, um, what am I going to say it? While you guys are watching this video, I'll be getting another video up. Thanks so much for the support. This is with a 14-inch telescope. Those just arriving. Thanks for subscribing. And, um... Uh, yeah, a 14 inch telescope that this magnificent community raised. What are these clouds? I don't get that. They're hovering. Those white objects are floating over top and you can even see their shadows underneath. I'm gonna get some music up for you guys. I'll get another great video up and um, this is a nice little break from the close, close footage. It's not for everyone with the eyes, right? It's not always easy. So. Just watch all the colors on the surface. Where the moon landings are in the blue, you'll see a bit later on. It's absolutely crazy that uh, you know that they showed us a gray surface. I'm sorry, Apollo 11. I think the surface was very, very colorful. There's a lot of dark crevices on the surface of the moon. Eh? They're everywhere. Here's Copernicus on the bottom. Look at all the spider web strands leading off to light sources and straight bridges. There really are bridges on the moon. I'd say thousands, at least many hundreds, but no, definitely thousands. I was like a crater over top. And these bridges go from everything to everything. And, but you, you know, we can't see them. We have to get in really close. I've showed them a lot. Many other channels I've showed those too. Here's one pipe that connects Kepler to Aristarchus crater. And another one just underneath leaving to go to Copernicus Creator. I mean, hey, the proof is really all there. So check out the colors, guys. Really nice color, uh, colorful surface. And the Apennine Mountains, as we are here, we'll zoom up later. And you're going to see the green structures. The structures are covered in greenery.
Now we're coming up to the area where the Apollo 11 supposed moon landing happened right here and look at the surface look at the different colors look at the many different elevated levels Look how the craters are illuminating the surrounding areas all around them. Notice the objects are green themselves, whether it be a growth over them or the structures themselves are green, but it is not refraction of light. We don't know what cloud cover looks like hundreds of thousands of kilometers away. We don't know what anything looks like in space and what is or not real. What was told to us is real or not, we do not know. The fact that the surface looks like it is molded together right like a layer and everything is leaked like they say with the the supposed ejecta and overflowing of the craters from the meteorite or uh yes or impact of asteroids no i really think that the surface is molded together because we see the effect with the cloud cover and now of course holographic veil camouflage veil atmosphere all the above, this is what could be really interacting and disturbing with us. I was talking about um, sound waves on Facebook and I was looking that up, as I always do. Nikola Tesla is definitely my mentor and I've looked in one of them anyways. And if you don't know Nikola Tesla, guys, you really have to look him up. Those of you who have uh, the capability of using your energy or feel that you have the capability of using energy and those only those will understand but just look up Nikola Tesla and you know that was part of my journey Nikola was part of my journey and my research and I'm really happy I looked into it many years ago because this guy is amazing and they say he died in an apartment in New York in the United States with uh, not a cent to his name his patents were stolen by Edison, etc. You got to really listen to the story. So, anyways, I don't want to get off track here. Sorry, but it really is, um, you know, something I want the world to know that the moon is inhabited. Just my belief. I have the proof that I have that I'm offering to you guys. Those just arriving here, please look into the videos. There are many, many controversial videos. Um, Guys, I'm not done with stars. Look back in the videos. I've gotten deep shots of the constellations, clear as day, all the constellations very, very clearly. I've shown them on the channel. And some of the videos are remaining at 100 and 200 views, which doesn't make any sense because constellation of Orion, I got closer than a Hubble telescope. Don't mean to brag, but you really have to check them out. I'm not kidding about it. I got inside of the nebulae showing all the stars. Did you guys know that stars were born inside of nebulae? You know, the universe could have been created that way. Whether God made the nebulae create the stars or not, I think it's a beautiful thing. The way that we learned of their creation, about how they formed, why we're here. Some of these stars get heavy, well, they all do at one point, and they fall out of the nebulae, causing massive stellar winds. And of course, the entire universe has both cold temperatures and hot temperatures everywhere. There are suns in the constellation of Lyra, thousands of them all over the, the universe, get the galaxies nearby, the galaxies further out. It's so interesting. And when you start reading uh, about the stars and how they formed and it's, I mean, 
some people are mixing up the stars with the UFOs. They have everything for them, these secret project people or beings, to hide themselves so naturally because they're blending in with the universe itself. So they're totally natural looking. Unless you notice the most minute, minuscule detail, you're not gonna see them at all. And those who come here that have strong religious beliefs, don't let this channel uh, you know, take you down or take away the way you feel about, dare I say it, your God, you know? I mean, I'm here to give this information. This should be an extra into your beliefs to adjust exactly the belief system because I'm sorry, but there is a lie implanted somewhere in what we were told. And it's our right to you know, try to find it.